The Catskill Mountains in upstate New York seems an unlikely place to begin an NBA story, but that is where this one starts, at a resort called Cutchers. I've always been a basketball buff, even though I was never much of a basketball player, and there was a great interest in basketball in this area. During the 1950s, some of the top young players from around the Northeast would spend their summers working at Cutchers, including Bob Cousy. I have an old and uh, lasting relationship with the, with the Catskills. I worked as a waiter here and helped me, put me through college. And Wilt Chamberlain, who spent his summers working as a bellhop. I ended up working my way up from the first year to become the captain of the bellhop. And that was a very important position because these people put up a lot of clothes, trunks and various different things, which were not easy to carry around. So I would always take one of my little guys and we'd take the bags down to the nearest window. He'd go upstairs and I'd lift them up and give them to them upstairs. We thought we'd save a lot of time, but probably we didn't save any time at all. When they weren't working at their job, they spent time working on their games. During Wilt's time there, the legendary Red Arback was coaching the Cutcher's team. Red saw a town in me, and he used to take me out on these little teaching things he would have in various camps around him, and, I would, and I, would, I would be his protege, so to speak. But Wilt's job was his first priority. He would have practice at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I would say to Red, I can't go to practice. I'm, I'm working. This is, remember, I'm up here to make money, Red. So he didn't like that too much. After the horrible tragedy that left Maurice Stokes paralyzed in 1958, Milton Kutcher sought out Jack Twyman to offer assistance. When I met Milt Kutcher uh, that fall in New York, he said, Jack, I think you need some financial help. Why don't we have a game? I'll provide everything but the players. You get the players there, and we'll feed them, we'll house them, we'll give them a good time, and we'll try and raise some money for Stokes. As it turned out, recruiting the players was the easy part due to the widespread affection for Stokes around the league. He had something transcending as a person. He was very, very warm, and everyone just loved him. If they asked him to do something for Mo, wasn't a soul not going to do it. When we had the first game at Cutchers, we needed 10 players. I think 75 guys showed up at their expense. The game is a benefit for the stricken Maurice Stokes and a brilliant performance by all hands. The NBA cared very strongly for, the, for their fallen heroes. Dolph Shays gets the gold attack into high gear. It was a collection of the greatest basketball players in the world getting together for one cause, one cause only, to play and entertain the guests for a great purpose. Bob Cousy with his ball handling artistry. Passes to teammate Frank Ramsey to yield a score. So each year they played the game for Maurice. And each year the support of the players grew even stronger. It was one of the <laughs> greatest all-star groups of talents for all those years I've ever seen in my life. Top individual honors went to Will Chamberlain for a brilliant performance. He was voters most valuable player. Will never missed a game, and Oscar never missed a game. Red Arback never missed a game. It was never a problem because Maurice was one of us, and that's what we had to do because he needed it. And finally, after several years, Maurice's health improved to the point where he was able to start attending the game. He is just thrilled to be here, just to get up here and see all of his old friends and. Uh, Normie Drucker was just here. Normie is uh, uh, refereeing the game this evening, and the last thing he said to Maurice, now don't holler at me tonight. He says, he says I got a tough enough job as it is. So uh, he's just pleased to be here. He's looking forward to the game this evening, and uh, he's looking forward to coming back next year. He was in a chair, and he almost wanted, he wanted to get up. You could tell he was fighting to get up, but he couldn't make it. It was just sort of heart-wrenching, very emotional time. How the players, his contemporaries, made it their business to show up and play. It gave him the inspiration to, to go for another year so he could look forward to going up to the games. And the game was a financial success as well. We had a lot of expenses, all the things that had to be done for him. 
and it allowed us to raise the money needed to defray his medical expenses. After Maurice died in 1970, Jack Twyman and the Cutchers continued to honor Maurice in the only way they knew how. After Maurice passed away, Melton said, we have this tradition now, and there are other people that we can help. How do you feel about continuing the game as a Maurice Stokes game? And it wasn't a big decision. Maurice would have liked that. So the game continued in Maurice's honor, with the proceeds going to retired players in need. I've been here since its inception in 1958, and it does a lot for a lot of basketball players who are having problems in the world. It was a long way from the nearest NBA city, but Cutcher's Resort was a place where one special family made a difference. The Cutchers are terrific people, and as important as they were with the games and the money we generated, they were equally as important emotionally because they really cared for Maurice. The Cutcher family also considered to be my family. They are people that you only meet very, very seldom in life because they are very, very giving. I don't think there's anything in the annals of sports that equals this. This game brings out the best in the players and even with ourselves, trying to do for somebody else. That makes life. We're now pleased to be joined by